Well, good afternoon, ladies, and happy Tuesday. Hey, hey Michelle. Hey, so uh, for those of you who are joining us for the very first time, my name is Michelle and I'm the Outreach Event Coordinator. I am joined today by our resident artist, Miss Lonnie. How are hey. you, Miss Lonnie? I'm great. How are you guys? Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too. Um, and we're also going to be chit chatting with our wildlife expert, Miss Lauren. How are you doing today? Doing well. So, <laughs> uh, did you ladies know that today is National Bird Day? I do. Now I do. Yes. Thanks, Michelle. You always know. <laughs> <laughs> Anything wildlife, Lauren knows about. So, today we've got some exciting things in store. Um, one of the animals we're going to be drawing is actually a request from our community. And the second animal is to celebrate National Bird Day. So before we, I let you get started, Miss Lonnie, I'm going to go over some webinar reminders with our audience. All right, so like I said, for those of you that are joining us for the first time today, welcome to our first webinar of 2021. We will be, um, so I want to let everyone know that this is an audio visual presentation. So even though you can see and hear us, we will not be able to see and hear you. So with that in mind, you can ask questions using the chat box on the right hand side of your screen. And as time permits, I will go ahead and ask those questions or get them answered for you. Okay, today we are going to be talking about the mountain lion and the woodpecker and learning how to draw each of those animals. Um, next week, I hope that you guys will join myself and um, Miss Izzy for story time with animals as we talk about Jake the Growling Dog, who was written by Samantha Shannon. Okay. And you can are free to join us for any of our other webinars. Today we're doing watercolor. Next week we are doing story time. At the end of the month, we have our animal adventures workshop. And if you're part of a scouting group, we do offer many different um, scouting days where we talk about some animals, work on a project, and play a game. You guys have the chance to earn a patch for that um, starting next week as well. We also have our winter session of our Kids for Animals Club. This is an after-school club where kids get together and they learn all about different animal facts and how to take care of them. So if you'd like to share your artwork with us, you can go ahead and submit using the link that you see on the screen. And I'll go ahead and put that in the chat box for you. Um, if it, for any reason you've got to leave us, uh, this webinar is recorded and will be sent to the registered email tomorrow afternoon. And without further ado, take it away, Miss Lonnie and Miss Lauren. Hey guys, hey Miss Lauren. How you doing? Hi. I'm really excited um, to get started yeah. with you. Um, before we get going though, you guys, new year, new changes. So um, you guys should have received your copy of templates already with you. I'm actually gonna have them pre-cut now for these. So today we are gonna do the mountain line and we're doing the woodpecker. So I need you guys to use hard stock paper. Um, or you can use watercolor paper. You can use regular paper too, but it usually soaks up the paint really quickly because it's all mostly water. Um, I'm gonna bring back the oldie but goodie. I love this handy dandy um, watercolor kit because you can take it anywhere and it's not bulky. I got this one on Amazon, so I highly recommend these. And it has a cool little pad here where you can actually soak up some of your watercolors. So this is what we're gonna be using. Um, initially, I'm gonna start off with these colors because this is kind of a mountain lion vibe here and sort of the red, so just kind of a heads up. Um, and then I highly recommend these really cool watercolor pens. Um, they have different sort of thin, thick, flat ones. And these are really good, especially if you're gonna be doing a lot of watercoloring, you can do a lot of more detail work with some of these, uh, the tips on some of these, you can see they're really thin. And then lastly, just some pencils. 
Um, I'm getting a lot of focus there, I can tell. And then also kind of like a dark outline marker if you want, or a Sharpie. Keep in mind some of the work we do is kind of fine detail work. So if we do small eyeballs, it's good to use actually a really cool water tip pen like that. Or you can go ahead and just end up using a thin pen to get started. So before we even start talking about some of the animals, I wanted to just show you what we do. So we're just gonna use this really cool template and I'm just gonna go ahead and lay it out the way that I had used it in my original painting. But keep in mind, you guys can kind of draw it wherever you'd like. And we're just gonna outline it and keep in mind that if when you're doing this, to just try to keep your lines pretty light because we're just gonna go back after and you can kind of erase it after it's all done. So as you can see, and it's really cool because if you make any mistakes, um, it's not a big deal, it's watercolor. You can usually go over the layers um, and we always go from light to dark when we're working in watercolors. So um, that is always very helpful when we're working on uh, the watercolor projects on this show. And so remember that um, also, if you feel like you wanna keep redoing them, like Michelle said, you guys will receive this in a video email. So there you go, really simple. And I kind of made mine slightly darker. Let me hold it up so you guys can see that. And then we're gonna actually draw some detail work into it really quickly. And just, I can tell by the lighting in the window that I'm gonna hold it up after so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and just realign the ears and connect the forehead to the back of the second ear there. And I'll hold it up when I'm done so you guys can see. And then I'm gonna work on his little, what is it, Lauren? A snout, right? Yeah, huh? yeah, it could be snout, muzzle. It's muzzle, there you go. That's, that was kind of the word I'd prefer. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and draw the back of his leg just to finish it off. And you don't have to do this stuff, you guys. If you wanna go ahead and just draw stuff on your own and kind of eyeball it, you can go ahead and do that. But I know that a lot of my friends maybe wanna just make sure that they're doing the appropriate lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold it up, as you can see. So I basically just kind of rounded out the ear, connected the head, and then worked on his muzzle here brought his mouth back up and I'll put the eye up in a minute as well. So it's sort of like he's just kind of a half silhouetted eye. So I'm gonna just do that really simple and you guys can do more detailed eyes if you like. Um, I know mountain lions have really amazing eyes so we can talk about that in a few minutes. And then I just finished his, his leg. So I kind of put that up and connected his stomach and then just did the very top and that's it. Um, the second one I'm going to do, so I'm going to do the outline on the woodpecker as well, since we're doing the outlines. Real simple guy I have here. And in fact, we're going to work on a different color combination because um, we have certain local woodpeckers that actually fit our area and have different colors um, because of the regions that they're in. Right, right, Lauren? That's the reason why they all have different colors, correct? Yeah, depends on, usually depends on where they're located. So. A lot of times with birds, there's different subspecies um, that kind of are under the umbrella of the common name. So like in this case, we we sometimes will just think about a bird that kind of looks like this as a woodpecker and we think, oh, they're all just woodpeckers. But depending on where you go and you know what kind of trees are around and what kind of food sources are around, um, there's lots of different kinds of woodpeckers. So we have, we have some, um, specific kinds around our area. So I know the ones in our area are more, I noticed they have the redness in the top of their head and then mm -hmm. they're more kind of black and white, which is really cool. Um, mm -hmm. But the one that I painted originally was actually a blue one. So I know, like you said, regionally, I guess it depends on where um, they're living environmentally, what they're sort of living around and that's that's for protection, right? Sometimes, yeah, sometimes it's for protection, like the black and white speckles often are, um, you know, a way to camouflage into trees and shaded areas that have kind of like that speckly um, shading. But mm -hmm. um, a lot of times with birds, their colors are to attract mates too. So a lot of times the male birds are really, really brightly colored. Um, and it's just from um, generations and generations of selective um, mating. Got it. So here you go, you guys. So what I did is I just made a really simple tree. I'm gonna do a really thin tree just cause I like when the 
woodpecker is kind of on a smaller tree. And then we're gonna do a cool branch after. So just kind of giving you a heads up what I'm gonna do with mine. So when we get started, so, you know, Lauren, I was looking at the mountain lion when I was choosing the colors and it was these colors of like, like orange and sort of red, like it felt like more orange yellow. So I'm going to paint him orange and yellow and start with the lightest orange yellow I want. But why is it that they're kind of that orange and yellow? Do you know? Well, I mean, they are lions, right? So when we yeah. think about lions, we think about the the ones that we see out in, you know, the the deserts of Africa on safari and stuff. Um, yeah. So they are related to those lions. Um, and so they share a lot of the similar characteristics. Our mountain lions are a bit smaller. Um, the one that we're drawing today looks like he's had some really good meals lately so that's <laughs> yeah <laughs> probably new but year not, new, new him new goals you know yeah <laughs> living his best uh, life <laughs> but a lot of times you'll see mountain lions um if you see pictures of mountain lions they they're pretty lean um because they are they're mostly muscular you know so yeah. um they can they can run and jump really fast and they have lots of really good um really special abilities um like you were talking about with their senses too they um they have really really good hearing and really really good vision because they're normally hunting in uh the evenings and at night um so actually a kind of a interesting thing though is that they they don't have that great sense of smell but really? um, yeah, but their other their other um, senses are really good, so it kind of makes up for it. So, like, do they not need smell in the same capacity? They just don't. I guess they just don't use it as much. Um, like, like yeah. you might think of other predators. So, um, I don't know exactly, you know, the evolutionary reason for it, but. Yeah. Um, I think probably just because their their hearing and their eyesight is so good um yeah. that's enough for them maybe well it's so cool because i actually like that you and i have to analyze this while we're talking it's just like oh i never thought about that like why is it like that you know mm -hmm. which is really interesting um so you guys i did my first uh layer of yellow but i'm actually going to go into an orange now and i'm going to do um an outline of the mountain lion and what's great about watercolor is it blends really well so you can kind of just use a little bit it'll go a long way but I'm going to do an outline because I want to show some of the lines of his muscles and his legs, just like that. And you know, I like Lauren is what we always end up talking about is another reason I think that um, mountain lions are these colors is because we live in a desert, right? That's right. Yeah. So um, they are predator species. So they are going to want to blend in, not because they're hiding from anything, but because um, they, they want to sneak up on their prey exactly so um are they terribly social with each other too no no they're very um very independent creatures they're the um original social distancing good examples um they really <laughs> they really only hang out um when it's mating time they'll go and find someone to mate with and then uh mom will raise raise the cubs on her own um and they they usually stay with mom um for you know just for a little bit um sometimes it can be up to like two years but um but generally they'll she'll have you know one to six cubs if it's a really good season with lots of resources they'll have more cubs um but if it's kind of you know like after a fire or something when there's not a whole lot of resources they might not have quite as many um and that that's the same thing with with coyotes and lots of lots of wildlife actually they'll they'll reproduce in accordance with the amount of resources that are available got it that's really interesting it must be so rough especially when we saw all of the wildfires and all sort of the things that kind of affect them so so deeply and we get so many of them now a year mm -hmm. yeah luckily most wildlife is really well adapted to to these kinds of changes um surely the you know climate change has had a huge impact on the resources that are available 
um, and the fires are a result of that, um, as we know from our scientists. Um, so, so we do we do want to be aware of that, and um, and there's lots of really great organizations that are doing really good work and um, trying to help these species sort of survive. Um, but yeah, I mean, lots of times they're they're um, they know where to find food, even if it's a little bit of a a skinnier year for them. Um, <laughs> we don't want them to rely on us for food ever, so we'll just want to make sure that we're never intentionally providing food for them. Um, but uh, supporting the local organizations that do um, that do kind of um, work on conservation is going to be the best way to to help these guys. Got it. Um, so while you were talking, Lauren, I'm just telling them, um, I did a third layer. So I used the third darkest. Um, and it's cool because a lot of these have these gradients. So you can kind of understand if you want to choose the lightest version of something and then just kind of go forward with the different, <laughs> the darkness color. This is definitely a more uh, difficult watercolor. So I, what we're trying to do now is offer something that's a little bit more detailed. Um, so normally this would be a project that would take you guys probably a lot longer because you could keep going layers upon layers um, because the more that you add, the more detail you can put into his legs and into the shadowing and kind of like what Lauren was talking about, just like his muscles because, I mean, they are so fit, right, Lauren? I mean, if anything, sometimes they're just looking for food all the time, so they're just working out all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they can they can bound up to 40 feet while they're running. They can leap 15 feet into a tree. They could climb over 12 foot fences, um, and they can they can usually go like 10 miles an hour running. Um, but the, in a sprint, they can reach up to 50 miles an hour. So they're very athletic creatures. Yeah, it's beautiful. So. Um... I know we were talking about this and I was going to start talking about the environmental factors since we're painting this guy. And I think I'm going to do kind of a dusk night, um, sort of a horizon and a cool theme in the background. But I know there's a very famous mountain lion that was uh, known for like a really cool picture of him in like the nighttime, right? That's right. Yeah. P22, he lives in Griffith Park. So um, that's where the LA Zoo is located and um, lots of other cool hiking trails and stuff in the Hollywood sign and Griffith Observatory. Um, and he's the only mountain lion that, that lives there. Um, so he's pretty famous. Um, and there's some great organizations that are working to help conserve his habitat. And um, I think Friends of Griffith Park is a really good one. Okay. And then there's also um, the Save LA Cougars campaign, which is fighting for um, for conservation in the Santa Monica Mountains, where there are a lot of other um, a lot of other mountain lions, cougar, what you know you could call mountain lions and cougars and pumas are all the same thing. Um, but uh, but yeah, there's a ton of other mount not a ton, but there's plenty of other mountain lions in the Santa Monica Mountains. But it's it's kind of all you know crossed off by all the freeways because the freeways are real are really dangerous for them um so so the say LA cougars campaign is actually um they're they're working to create a um a overpass sort of on the over the 101 freeway i believe wow. so that so that the mountain lions and other wildlife can can cross the freeway safely um without worrying about getting hit by cars Got it. And so who's going to tell all the wildlife about it? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? It's like, you, can't, you can't put a sign up that's like, yes. sorry, <laughs> the but, first thought, but no, it's I, a great question because you know, I, a lot of people probably wonder that. But the good thing is that the wildlife, uh, like I was saying before, they're really adaptable and have good instincts and um, they're going to kind of um, they're not going to just cross the freeway at the first chance that they get because yeah, there, totally. there's a sense of danger, right? So they'll go looking for passes like that. Um, and once it's discovered, it's going to be it's going to be common knowledge amongst the wild animal world. Yeah, right. It gets around. No, I think once they remember, right, they're, of course, they probably have this amazing 
memory. Wow, this looks like a flag almost. I didn't realize that right now. Yeah, it looks so like crazy. my bag, my bag behind me. Yeah, so it you guys, good. it does, it looks cool. So I just started on the horizon. I just did a really dark line across and then I added a bunch of water to sort of let it fade out. And then the bottom, I kind of did the same thing. I just added just kind of dark color everywhere. But what I want to do, just show you guys a real quick trip, uh, trick is just drawing mountains in the back like this. And I will go ahead and close up. And you don't have to draw them. You can totally freestyle them with your hand. But for my friends who just want to practice, that's kind of what I did. It's super simple, just to kind of give like a cool mountain plane of um, the background of the hills. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just use, which I didn't clean, <laughs> but it's okay if it blends. That's what I love about watercolor. There really are no mistakes with watercolor. So I'm just gonna do like a cool back of brown. You know what's funny, Lauren, is I think my cat's outside demanding to come in. Isn't that funny? Oh my God. I know. It's like, I know you're talking about my ancestors. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, um, Lauren, are they all over? Like, are are these cats all over the are, the country? Or where are they exactly? Are they just here with us? Yeah, they're in North America. Um, so, I mean, we, we kind of are familiar with them here. But they're, they're in other parts of North America as well. Um, it's really hard for scientists to kind of get a get a good gauge on how many there are and where exactly they are because like I was kind of saying before they're very kind of secretive mysterious elusive creatures um, and and you're not going to see them very often and so when you do make sure you keep your distance um, and uh, and don't bother them and just appreciate that you got a glimpse of a mountain lion um, because it's very, very, um, they really don't want anything to do with humans. Um, you know, that's so. a great point, Lauren. I was gonna bring that up to you is, yeah, what do you do if you see a mountain lion on a hiking trail? Like I'm sure some of the people watching go hiking and <clears throat> what mm -hmm. should they do? Yeah, well, I mean, first thing I would say, take a picture because that's really lucky. <laughs> Yeah, mountain uh, yeah. lions generally aren't going to be threatening. Um, I think that there was a video that went around recently of a mountain lion sort of chasing off a hiker because he had gotten oh yeah close to her cubs. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's really like that's pretty uncommon. Um, and he did exactly the right thing. You know, he just left the area um, yeah. because you don't want to you don't really want to continue you know that would be considered harassment of of um of cubs so you just you just really don't want to bother them at all um and so if you see them just you know go in the other direction um if if they are sort of like in a area like in the middle of a trail or something um you can hate you can you know make yourself look really big make lots of noise um, if, if you kind of are stuck right there. Um, and so like, well, that's what we tell people to do with, with most predatory species, you know, hazing and making yourself look big and, and don't run away ever. Um, but if you can back away um, and like, you know, if your car is right there or something, that's probably a good idea. Um, we don't have a whole lot of problems with, with mountain lions becoming habituated in the same way that we do with um, coyotes and, and things like that. So um, the fear that they're gonna start getting extra bold and brazen is, is not there in the same way that it is with, with, um, with coyotes. So that's why I'm telling you it's okay to, to kind of back away and go um, leave the area. Whereas, you know, with a coyote, I would never tell you to walk away from a coyote. I would always tell you to haze it until it leaves. <laughs> and maybe um, we can talk about coyotes some some other day soon. We totally should. I we, you and I always end up talking about coyotes at some point. I, I know um, they're my favorite. That's why. Yeah, they're really cool actually. And you know you make a good point because the reason that <clears throat> um they're different too is because they go they roll in packs. And these guys don't roll in packs, right? And I can't even imagine seeing a bunch of mountain lions all hanging out rolling yeah. in a pack and Freak me That's out. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah. You're you're pretty much only ever gonna see one mountain lion unless it's 
right at breeding season or if it has cubs and it's like with a bear with cubs i would never tell you to go and haze a bear with cubs you know you want to leave them alone exactly so Warren, um when you happen to see you know a mountain lion in your yard is that because they're coming in looking for you know food resources probably yeah i mean you that would be super cool if you like live in the hills and stuff and you, you catch them on like your your ring camera or something um it's probably because you have resources in your neighborhood or in your yard so um in order to prevent them from coming into your yard if you don't want them rolling through um the best thing to do is is make sure you identify whatever um, resources might be there so if you're leaving your pets outside or leaving your cats outside lonnie <laughs> then you don't you, you don't you want to them down. i've had them for years <laughs> but okay yeah i know, I know. no i i know <laughs> you don't also live in mountain lion territory either so <laughs> yeah i live in coyote world though but he doesn't go down okay. he's an old man but yep i agree <laughs> Um, so we have uh, one of our friends asking about how far mountain lions can jump. And actually, I want to throw that question um, up on the screen for everybody to answer before we give before you give a, a correct answer. How about that, Lauren? Go for it. I All right. So the question is up on your screen now on how far can a mountain lion jump? Is it 20 feet? 45 feet or 100 feet? Okay. So we'll give it about five more seconds. All right, so Lauren, mostly everybody is saying 45 feet, but 20 feet is, uh, is thrown in there too, so. How far can a mountain lion jump? No, Miss Lania, I think we lost her. We did. We um, did. So I'll go ahead and answer that question. Mountain lions can jump up to 45 feet. Wow, that's crazy. That's awesome. So impressive. Yeah. So, I mean, just their abilities are absolutely amazing absolutely um, and part of the reason that they can jump up to 45 feet is because of their body size so i actually have another question um, about that size oh i hear her i heard lauren <laughs> i see you can you see me no what <laughs> I can so, I can hear, but before we before we do that, um, Michelle, okay. I just want to show the viewers really quickly. So I'm gonna let this dry, and then we're gonna go back and actually do the face work for the mountain lion because your paper should have been pretty wet. And while Lauren was talking, I ended up using darker greens in the front, and I just kind of used a fan motion to create the scene in the front. And you could keep going and adding more and more layers for the canyon in the back. The more you add, the more in depth it'll go. So um, I know that uh, Michelle has a a real quick pull to go up to go up, and then we'll get into the woodpecker. All right. So it's going on your screen now. What percentage of a mountain lion's length is its tail? So is it one third, one half, or one quarter? I know I would probably have a hard time with this question because, you know, my little black panther that roams around my house, his tail is like 10 inches long and I feel like it's half of his body. So, all right, so we're going to go ahead and close it up. Lauren, most people say that a mountain lion's tail is half of its body length. Wow. I mean, that's pretty close, but what was the other, what were the other options? Um, one third or one fourth. I think we lost her again. I did. So a mountain lion. Oh. What? There you are. Oh my gosh. Sorry. Okay, <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with my internet. 
Yeah, so a mountain lion's tail is actually one third of its body length. Wow. That's what I said. <laughs> I, we didn't hear it in count. I'm kidding. <laughs> okay, guys. Let me get right, started. Let's talk woodpeckers. Yeah, let's get into woodpeckers. So, um, so before we get started, we're actually gonna do a cool black and white here. And I actually want you guys to like freestyle this one. This was my original woodpecker that I created. So we are gonna do this really cool, like sleepy hollow haunted, like cool bark and stuff. But this one's actually gonna be black and white. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just do some black and white lines here. So this you can kind of play around with and we've done this before you guys. In these is just kind of use your brush and just do these lines that kind of go straight down like this to kind of give him a little bit of like fluff. So doing stuff like this, and you don't have to keep adding black, you can kind of just organically bring the paint so it fades away. And that actually makes it look a little cooler and gives it more of an edge and more like a realistic vibe. If you do that, just like that. And you can go back and dip. And then I have my paper towel here if I feel like I'm going too dark. You can always just dab it there. Kids know about dabs. So here you go. So all the way down to the very bottom of his tail, like that. And then he's got this really cool red, what is that on his head? What do they call that, Lauren? Uh, it can be called a crest or a crown. Okay. And actually the one I drew was more dramatic, but I feel like the one in the picture I was looking at is more of like a throwback 1950s rockabilly pompadour thing. <laughs> it's just super cute. So I'm going to try to actually change my vibe on this and kind of do it more like a cool slick back little guy. Totally. I love that. Like 1950s live. He looks, like, he looks like Woody the Woodpecker. There you go. See, I love that color too. Um, and I'm going to break the rules a little bit because on this one, he doesn't really have any more red, but I actually want to add a little pizzazz down here. So this is your world, you guys. Do what you want. <laughs> there, just like that. Really simple. And most of his face is pretty clear. Um, there's just a little line work right under his eye that kind of connects to the rest of his head and kind of has that. And then this is kind of a great, his bill. It's kind of gray, so I would say even kind of get rid of some of that black so you can kind of fade it. Doesn't look like a straight up black bill. A lot of the um, birding guides describe our local acorn woodpeckers as having uh, clown faces, which I thought was kind of funny. That is funny. <laughs> that is cool. So the one, so the one that I'm actually painting is that one called an acorn. It, that one, it, an acorn woodpeckers look a lot like that. They don't have quite a dramatic crown or crest like that, um, yeah. but the coloring is very similar. Okay. Yeah, I think you sent me a bunch um, because there's so many woodpeckers, right? Yeah, so many. So it's like, and they're all over. I mean, how many woodpeckers? Do you know how many woodpeckers? Oh, I know. I think that's probably a Michelle thing. I think that's a Michelle question. I think she has a poll for that. Do you, Michelle? Do you Michelle? have a poll for that one? No, I don't have a poll for that I'm one. But you I know the that. answer is 180. There you go. I knew it was 180. A wow. That's wow. That is wow. <laughs> I think we have like, I think we have like 20 something just in California. Wow, that's amazing. Um, I don't really see any though. Maybe I'm not paying attention. Maybe they're just not around what? me. I, I'm sure they are around you and you'll probably start seeing them after we talk about them because yeah. they're yeah. everywhere. Dude, any that's what oak my, tree? Maybe I don't have oak trees. I don't know. That's what happened once we started talking about ravens. Then they were everywhere in my life. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I heard that you can hear a woodpecker before you can actually see them. Wow. Oh yeah. yeah. Totally. That makes sense. So um, next up, you guys, I'm just doing the background and I'm just doing, I'm kind of mixing the colors. I'm doing two of these cool blues because I want to give it a very wintry vibe since that's kind of what's working this time of year, which I really like. And I'm really excited to get started on the on the branches and stuff. I mean, on the wood, the actual um, tree trunk. 
So why do they um why are they uh, why are they woodpecking? Lauren, <laughs> what are they doing? Great question. Why do they yeah. peck the wood? <laughs> yeah. They um so a couple of reasons. The first being food reasons. So some woodpeckers are, you know, mostly eating insects that they're finding on these trees or just below um, the bark. Um, our acorn woodpeckers are are actually making holes in tree trunks um, so that they can store their acorns in them. Okay. And then there's also woodpeckers that well most woodpeckers will make holes in trees because they're cavity nesters so they nest in cavities what the you know the holes in the trees kind of like cavities in your teeth but yeah. it's in a tree and um and so they'll have their nests in the tree which is another reason why they're they're pecking on the wood um and then how many babies do they usually have a year um well it depends on what kind of woodpecker we're talking about but um their clutch can be anywhere from you know um i think three to three to six is pretty yeah. common um there are some woodpeckers that they'll all nest all the females are will nest in in one nest together they're like very social colonies oh, wow. of woodpeckers i think the acorn woodpeckers actually are this way um and they but the females if they're not all laying at the same time they'll destroy the eggs that were laid before they got there whoa rugged Isn't that kind of crazy they're like kind of wild but it well we are this is a wildlife and watercolor show so yeah was like that's yeah. kind of savage <laughs> that is pretty savage okay guys so really quickly we're gonna work on the tree and i love this tree because i just want you guys to get really crazy with the black so try to just make it really super black and just draw a really dramatic line which didn't even get that dramatically black for me but there it is really dramatic line and then don't go back into the pad just kind of start fading it into the into the trunk just be careful that he already is he's already gray so make sure when you do that that you try not to blend it too much and we can always darken his um, bill or we can darken the trunk. So just know that when you're doing it. Um, and see, so just keep adding really dark and then just put a bunch of uh, water on it. And it's a really fun, it's really uh, calming and soothing. Sometimes these watercolors, when we're done, Lauren, I'm like, I'll zend out. It looks really relaxing. I think I'm gonna paint with you next time. <laughs> I think you should, this is not a bad, it's not a bad idea actually. So what I like about this is that we're practicing um, sort of blending in the colors and this is very black. So just know that when you're doing that, when you're putting it against another similar image like this, watercolors, he's super black and gray. So just know that when you're working on the trunk to kind of be wary of that while you're working. It looks really nice. Thanks, friend. So. Um, what kind of um, what kind of woodpecker do you have in your neighborhood? Which have you seen? You're in Pasadena, I, correct? So, yeah, I think it's it's either a nuttles nut nuttles woodpecker mm -hmm. or an acorn woodpecker. I think it might be a nuttles though because I haven't seen acorns being hidden, but I also haven't looked very closely. But it's in this. There's one in this tree right outside my front door um and there's this really cute little hole on one of the branches that i always see it going in and out of so i'm pretty sure that's his little nest or roosting spot that's so cool yeah so i'm making this one really dramatic on the tree trunk so like i said you guys if you guys keep adding more and more detail it'll just get cooler and cooler i actually phased out his feet but that's where your feet are supposed to go. So I'm gonna wait till it dries and then I'm gonna use actually a, a fine tip and I'm gonna make his little claws, they're claws, right? Yeah, his little claws um, on, the, on the branch. But a lot of the stuff we work on, you kind of have to let it dry for a minute. And then the final oh. thing I'm gonna do, oh, what? I was gonna say, remember digits. His, oh, digits, yeah, digits. okay. 
I actually have a poll question about that oh, with an interesting you. fact that I want to throw up. Okay, go for right. it. So how many digits does a woodpecker have? Is it four, five, or six? Toes works too, but I, I just like digits. <laughs> Those just sounds weird for them. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, we're going back and forth between the the audience is going back and forth between four and five. It's really almost neck and neck between four and five toes. Mm -hmm. So well, the answer, you guys are pretty close. Yeah. So the answer is actually four toes. They have two that face the front and two that face the back, and it helps them to grip on to whatever it is that they're, you know, a, a tree, a pole. Yeah. So Lauren, can I? ask you uh what do woodpeckers eat uh woodpeckers eat depending on what kind of woodpecker you are so acorn woodpeckers obviously acorns but they also like to catch bugs on the fly on the wing um and then most other woodpeckers eat um eat bugs off the trees um but they can also eat you know fruits and things like um like uh, the little berries and stuff um, that grow on on trees around the area, even like poison oak berries they'll eat. And um, what's the other one that's around here? Crab apple berries. Is that that's that's a, that's a tree around here, right? Yeah, that's a tree. Actually, the deers eat that. I think, don't they? I, I think, think so. Yeah. 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 So and. Isn't don't they eat with their they grab the bugs with their tongues? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I was telling you guys about this last time. They have they have tongues like the um like hummingbirds that they they go way out and then they they retract around their skull. So weird. It's so cool. So I made their four fingers or digits and I made it all creepy. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> like that. I don't care. I love it. <laughs> I love it. It's so cool. Okay. So you guys, the last thing we're gonna do is work on his eye. So I'm actually gonna just cheat and do this right now, only because we're running out of time and I want you guys to be able to see what I'm do doing. So I did like a a circle like that, and then I'm gonna put a little circle in there. And if you can't for any reason, that's okay. But then and then you just kind of fill some of the circle in just like that. And you can add more detail and do more work with him. And then finally, I'm gonna go back to our, our mountain lion friend and just do some details on him. As you can see, it kind of dries. See, it gets really wet. So you have to make sure to lay, sometimes you have to weight your pieces down to make sure that they don't start curling. You can put a book on them or just, or you can tape the ends too, which is super helpful. So I'm just gonna go back and outline his eye. And I'll I'll pull it up to you guys so you guys can actually see it. And he's a very happy mountain lion. So 2021 is going to be a good year for him. Don't jinx it. No, I won't. I'm <laughs> blessing it, dude. See? That mountain lion looks like he just had a healthy meal. He did look. It's dinner time. Yeah. So what what is on the menu for mountain lions, Lauren? I'm sorry, you kind of were breaking up there. What? Oh, I said, what is on the menu for mountain lions? Oh, um, usually they'll prey on deer. They'll do, they'll do like one deer a week if they're available. Um, that's kind of like their ideal meal. Um, but sometimes they'll prey on smaller animals and even insects if it's really if they're if it's really necessary. Um, but like all cats, including Miss Lonnie's cat, um, they are a hundred percent carnivores. How do you like it, guys? Love it. I've done so many of these. <laughs> I like his little digits, fingers. I like that one a lot. I like his he, <laughs> he does look like a little clown. Thank you. <laughs> Yay. I love it. So yeah, that's it, guys. January. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. So, this was so much fun. I'm glad that we 
did watercolors again. Um, so for everyone that's joining us, this same trio here is going to be on the first Tuesday of every month doing watercolors. Um, next month, next month we are starting um, our first in a series of six as we talk about different regions of the United States. So next um, month we will be talking about the Northwest West region with the bald eagle and the river otter. So I hope that you guys will come back and join us. Thank you for all of your questions. And ladies, it was very nice seeing you today. I hope you have an amazing week. Yeah, you thanks too. guys. Thanks for, thanks for coming. We'll see you guys in a month. All right. Bye, Bye everyone. See you later.